going on, guys? This is Justin. Welcome back to Tea with the BB. I have two awesome guests. Um, I see your Mary's got that gigantic smile on her face. <laughs> you know, always makes life brighter with her big smile. Um, but yeah, so guys, this is a question and answer show and I invite people on and they're able to ask me questions about places they're getting stuck. Um, I was just explaining this to them off camera, but for the people who are listening that will watch this, um, I tell people that I help with performance, happiness, and fulfillment. And basically, there's a definition from Earl Nightingale about what success is. Success is the pursuit of a worthy ideal, meaning knowing what that is for us and moving towards it. And like I was just explaining to them off camera, you know, that sounds very, very simple, but it's actually really difficult and very few people um, are actually doing that. And so that's the type of thing that I help with is helping people to figure out like, what is that really for them? And how do they get there? How do they move towards that as quickly and effectively as possible? Is, is that is my specialty or expertise that I do. Um, and really, I think ultimately, if you had to boil down to one word of what I do, which is tough, because there's a lot of benefits that people get from me, right? I'm not I'm not a sales or a business coach, but you will make more money from this because there's a performance element. I'm not a dating coach but your relationship's either going to get way better or you're going to get out of it if it's not good. You know, I'm not a health coach, but your body and your health is going to get better. So there's all these results, but really ultimately, I think we want all these things because we want fulfillment. And really that's what I'm helping people to do is showing up fully as themselves and living their life how they want to live it. And when we do that, when we kind of go up on this other frequency or level of showing up in the world, that's a different way to say it, then all of those things are results of us doing that. So I know that's a lot, but that's that's basically what I do. So, um, and there's lots of ways that I do that. And hopefully we're gonna get into that in some detail today with these two lovely guests. Um, and hopefully add as much value as possible in the short amount of time we have. I know it's an hour, but it actually goes very quickly. And so if you guys could just start by introducing yourselves so each other and the people listening know who we're talking to um just your name what you do maybe very very briefly kind of 30 30 seconds to one minute version of who you are and um we'll hop right into it and we'll move as fast as we can uh david since you're at the top of our rectangle is how i always like to do this if you want to introduce yourself to us you're the best dressed man in the zoom room right now um so yeah we can start with you oh my name is david colgan the president CEO of the south lake chamber of commerce and Florida. We're a business organization of about 800 members, and uh, we're here to help people be successful, to help shape the community. So um, I'm uh, wearing my suit today because we just had a about people recognizing our local responders. So we, we have uh, a lot of communications, a lot of events, but the, the bottom line goal is helping businesses be more successful. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, obviously, our listeners probably don't know this, or maybe some of them do, but uh, David and I, we, we know a lot of the same people. Obviously, David, I know you know uh, the Stanleys, Tony and Amy Stanley. I know you know Matthew Wheatley. Um, I know you know a lot of the, the kind of high-performing realtors in the Claremont area. And for the people listening, I, I used to do real estate in the Claremont area. I was in new home sales. Uh, with KB Home in the Claremont Groveland area. So a lot of a lot of similar people that we know, at least on the real estate side. So awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh Yo Mary, second but not least. Yeah. So uh Yo Mary Resio and I work for Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm a dar uh, director of marketing, um, I handle most communications that come out of um my art department and uh mostly like uh, member and employer communications. That's what we handle. So um, I am the person that um, they come to for any issues um, and just making sure that we meet our dates on our calendars. So it's a uh, high pace, little stressful, but I don't get stressed. I, I you know, what am I going to stress about? <laughs> exactly. When you smile like surgeon. that, what are you going to stress about? Do you, right. I do mean, you I'm do not anything gonna... with analytics because your shirt says analytics. I do. That's what I do. <laughs> analytics. Okay. Um, I do actually, and um, yeah, I don't stress because um, I'm not a surgeon and I'm not. Uh, my, nobody's life depends on any of the work that I do, so we're gonna get it done when it gets done. Exactly. You're not a life coach. With me, people's lives depend on it. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, I'm an analytics coach. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Analytics coach. <laughs> um cool all right so yo mary why don't we start with you so what's what's on your mind i mean i know you're already a very 
joyful person for people who don't know this about you you know you really are already living an amazing amazing exciting fun adventure kind of life um that I think so many of us want to be living and I think that's a really amazing admirable thing about you um but talk to me about maybe any potential places that you are getting stuck either maybe more business side personal right. side whatever whatever is on your mind that I could hopefully help with a little bit yeah I mean nobody's perfect right so um I oh, do no. enjoy my life right I travel I have a good time right. I don't really stress which is good things right but I think there are definitely areas where anybody would get stuck in right I think one of the things that I find that is um I guess a challenge is work-life balance, right? Uh, because when work gets hectic, it gets hectic and I have to get it done, right? There's no ifs or ands about it. Um, and just finding that balance of putting enough time into me as a person, because, you know, like I dance, right? So I dance salsa and of course, you know, I, I enjoy it, I love it and that's part of me, but, and I feel like that fulfills my heart right? And it makes me happy. But I think I don't, and I take classes and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And I would say, you know, I do uh, work on myself, but not in its entirety. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Like, like, I feel but, like it could be but give me a little more detail. Because so for both of you guys, the more detailed we can get with this, and right. I know it's short, an hour sounds long, it's this is right. going to go extremely exactly. fast. But yeah. give me as much detail as you can. And so I can hopefully give you a detailed answer where you can walk out of here and be like, oh, I'm going to use this right. and things are going to look different, you know? Right. So I, I think um, managing time, right? So I think it's a time management thing. It's like I am able to um, complete all the tasks that I need to do at work and I'm able to sometimes leave early and sometimes when it gets hectic, I don't leave early because, and that takes away from my personal life, from my um, meal times, from my gym time, from my dance time, from my, you know, and, and it's only so many time, mm -hmm. you know, so many hours in a day that you have that you can only complete things. So a lot of times it's like you, you lose that lack of sleep, right? Because it's like, well, I really want to get this done and I really want to get you know, I really want to go to the social on a Tuesday, right? And it's like, how do you find that balance? How do you set priorities maybe in your life and say, you know, yes, I'm going to put myself first, but we also have to get everything else done in order for you to complete the task that you need in your life, if that makes sense. It does. Like I can't so, like put work last, right? Because that pays the bills, uh, right? Uh, and I have to, you know, like it ha that has to come first. And of course, um, myself as well you know just it finding that balance okay no that's a good question and i i think this is a question that most people have you know especially like the more high performing you are um the more demanding your job or if you have your own business right. then, then that's really demanding obviously right um, i i think i think it's gonna really really depend big time on every person you know so mm -hmm. meaning so there's, so clarity is a big thing, right? So what we should do always depends on what we want to happen. Most of us don't really know what we want to happen, which makes it really hard to know what we should do. And that also sounds really simple, but it's not so easy, right? Because it takes a lot of self-awareness and it takes kind of courage to like build things how you want to build them. And we sort of have these ideas of like, that there's supposed to be some way that things are supposed to be. Like, I think most people think there's like this secret perfect work-life balance equilibrium that exists and we're all kind of trying to like crack that super secret code of what that is so everything's in this like zen alignment and you know so I'll give you an example for you your work-life balance is going to look different for me which is going to look different for David which is going to look different for all of us right because it always depends on how you want your life to look so for example some people might be okay working more hours than you with less fun time but you have a very, very high need, which probably we all do. You're just doing a better job at putting time to it. But you have a very high need for fun, you know? So for the people that don't know you that might be listening to this, you know, you'll marry 
does a ton of the salsa classes and going out dancing to the parties and socials and going to the congresses and there's congresses all over the country and there's congresses around the world and there's all of these best teachers in the world that teach these things and you go and it's so much fun and there's you know it's really like you can full-time do that you know and probably yeah. most of us that dance we do want to full-time do that um, yeah so so I think it's I think it's really an awareness thing of how much like right. what work would look like if it was perfect in every way right so how many hours a week do you want to be working how much money do you really need to make you know like how much you need to make to cover your bills is that enough if it's not enough how much more past that mark of your bills do you need to be making to be happy and fulfilled? You know, so we've got on the work category, like, okay, well, what would the ideal work be? How many hours would it be? How much would I be making? What would I be doing? Right. Mm -hmm. And then we've got all these other moving pieces of like, okay, well, if dance and social life and fun and all that was perfect in every way, like how much of that do I want to be doing? You know, do I want to be doing one class a week? Do I want to be doing five classes a week? You know, how many times do I want to be going out to these socials? Is it once a week? Is it three times a week? How many Congresses do it like, you know, so the more clarity you really, really have of each of those things, the more you can kind of start to construct it in a way that's right for you, right? Because one person might be like, if I go social dancing once a month, I'm doing great. And for right. you, you might be like, man, I got to go at least two, two times a week or I'm not happy, you know? Right. So, so the more you can answer what each of those look like, if they're perfect, the more you can start weaving them together. So for example, if you're, if the fun part, the dancing and the classes and the congresses and all that, stuff, let's just say, for example, that that stuff is nowhere near where you want it to be, right? And let's say that you're making more than enough money, but you're working more than you want to. Then maybe the answer is to scale back a little less at work to a different position or a less, a less version of that position or a different company altogether. Like maybe money's not your issue. Maybe your issue is not having as much fun as you want, and you don't even need that much money. So in a situation like that, you may want to make some tweaks on the work side to up this other stuff. But for some people, it might be like they're having a lot of fun, but they're on the line of bankruptcy, and they just can't really afford to be doing this and have to make some tweaks over here. So right. to answer your question, it's like, okay, like what would an ideal day look like? If your day was perfect in every way, if an ideal week, if an ideal month and year what would be happening and then needing to move those pieces around so it's right for you and every one of us is going to answer those in different ways but the better you can answer that the more you can know exactly how you want to do that so to, to get into some more detail because that'll be more valuable for you um how many how much money do you really want slash need to be making a year and how much are you making now so we can start with that yeah i think you know Work-wise, um, I'm gonna get a pen so I can. You know, money money-wise is not an issue, right? And I think work-wise, I just need to be able to really prioritize my work. And I think having, I you know, I I do have a team, and I think maybe giving away some of these hats. I wear a lot of hats at work. Okay. I think okay. I need to give some away and I'm trying and I'm doing right. So if I've given some away, I've, I retired some of these hats and said, no. And I think putting in the trust into the team to okay. say they can do this. Right. And being able to say, no, nope, I'm taking away this hat. Cause I think what happens is that I'm wearing too many hats, okay. you know? So I think that would really take away some of the time. I think, you know, um, fun wise, of course, you know, you can never have enough fun. Right. But I do, I probably do have to scale down a little bit. I mean, I don't have to go to uh, Congress every month. I mean, I do, uh, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But but you know what? But that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. You right. know, like you have a very high need for that and and you do it and that's not bad. Like that's not wrong. Right. You know, right. because we're all very individual. Like I said, there are people that if they go to one Congress a year, like man, they're really fulfilling that. You know, but right. for you that's not enough. So this right. is a great, a great quote that's worth writing down. It's like, what, what we should do always depends on what we want to happen, right? Uh -huh. There's not an outcome that's true for all of us because each of our lives are different, right? Uh -huh. So I could tell you, oh, this is what you should do. But if it's based on what I would do, it might not be right for you. The only right. thing I could know what you should do is for me to know how you want it to go. So 
So you're saying probably one of the big things is you're spending more time at work than you actually need to be spending. I do. I don't need to spend all that time. I think I can definitely delegate. I think delegation is a hard thing to do sometimes in anything, right? In life, at work, and everything. It's like you putting in that trust into um, folks sometimes is scary, right? And and it's it's not because I want to own everything. I want to make sure that we don't have any issues, right? Um, in the past, it's it was a rough and, you know, we've set ourselves up for success and we really have measures that we put in place in order to meet those guidelines. And I feel like sometimes when you have new folks, you kind of have to train them to make sure that everything is aligned, right? And I think that might be my biggest struggle. And I think the biggest struggle is having that trust and letting it go. And, and sometimes you just have to do it and not think about it, right? And I think that's, I think that is my biggest um, hurdle is letting go and delegating. So if people, if people make a mistake, what happens? Is it fixable? It is, it is, it's fixable. But okay. so let me, the let me give you a story. Is, is, you know, uh huh. Let me give you a quick story because I think this will help. So yeah. when I, up until not that long ago, a handful of years ago, I used to be terrified of making mistakes at work, right? And that was because I grew up as a very young kid. This is this is what I connected to. Of what I think of the reason is, is I was I was playing chess, like tournament, ter- <laughs> tournament chess. Right. And even as a little kindergartner, I was playing. And I the first the first um tournament I ever did, I I won all my games and I was the number one kid in the entire state for for chess. And then I was actually the number three person in the country for chess when I was in kindergarten. Wow. And so the but the reason I share these stories is with chess, if you make one freaking wrong move in that entire game, you can lose. And right. like you touch the piece, you gotta move it. And so I would like think out the entire game every time I touched a piece, like what are all the things would happen every time I do something? And I was so terrified because I knew the margin for error was so low. And so when I got older and I got into the work world, I was sort of like that where I was so scared to do anything or make mistakes because I thought, you know, I'm going to mess it up and everything's going to fall apart. And what I learned in the work world, which is the reason I asked you that question and of, of all the jobs I've had, it's pretty true so it's probably pretty true with you at least you know things are usually fairly fixable right now sometimes some mistakes are bigger than others and sometimes something is so far deep in the process that if there's a mistake deep in the process you know that can be probably problematic and there's certain things you want to check um or like have multiple sets of eyes on but most work things can be fixed you know so so maybe kind of like there's a great line from Tony Robbins where he's like, see it as it is, but not worse than it is, you know? So yeah. maybe in those situations, one of the reasons why it might be hard to delegate is because you're like, oh my God, like the world's going to fall apart if they get this wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. But maybe when you notice yourself doing that, you can be like, you know what, this is fixable. And if, if they make these mistakes, this is how I will go about fixing it. And this will have this small negative consequence, but this is how I would handle it and it will be okay. Because sometimes when we don't know, like, when we don't know what we would do if a certain bad things happen, we kind of freak out, right? Because we're like, oh, my God, if this happens, and we start getting emotionally involved, and we go downwards, right? Right. But if you already know, okay, if these mistakes happen, this is how I will deal with it. This will be the negative consequence, which will be a little bit negative, but not too negative. Mm-hmm. Then it sort of allows you, I think, to delegate more right? There's a, there's a thing Tony Robbins says too, where he's like, nothing has any meaning, but the meaning we give it, right? Which I think is true. So if you put a meaning on delegating stuff, which is like, when I give this to people, they're all going to screw it up and all of our clients are going to rip our heads off and, and, I, and I'm going to lose my job or whatever, then yeah, right. it would be very scary to delegate stuff, right? But if the meaning you put on delegating stuff is like, okay, um, my life is valuable. My time is valuable. Um, mm-hmm. My needs are valuable. And I'm going to delegate this because that's the right thing for my life to do and probably for the company also. And if they make these mistakes, then I will handle it in this way. Sorry. And it won't be, no, it's okay. you know, it's sort of seeing it as it is sort of makes it not as scary. 
I think a, right. a, a final thought on that particular <laughs> question is that a, a mistake I see a lot of people make who are really good people and have a really good heart is they put other people's needs above their own. And yeah. then they, they sort of end up paying a price big time on their, on their own, like needs <laughs> and mental health and spiritual health or however you want to say, it, like their own emotional well-being suffers. Right. And so I think for people like that who have a really big heart, which I think you would be one of those people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other people's needs are important. You doing okay over there? It's like what yeah. I'm saying is just like <laughs> so profound. You're like having a heart attack right now. I know, right? <laughs> um, like, oh my God, Justin is right. Um, but it's like other people's needs are important, right. but our <laughs> needs are important too. And so I would say valuing yourself at at least the same level or higher than your company and the other people and the results and the clients and everything else. Because when we don't do that, when we value ourselves lower and other people's needs higher, we get right. into those situations where we're doing way more than we should be doing, or we're accepting things we shouldn't be accepting. So um, I'm sorry to throw in a lot of things out here, but there's a lot of things that are coming to my head about your situation that are really helpful. I think that I share with my clients. Another, another thing you can think about, this is a great line, is that what you say no to is just as important as what you say yes to. And so when we get in that mode of just saying yes to everything that comes our way, it can become very, very problematic. So these are a handful of things you can start using now is no is your friend. You want to yeah. say no to everything that is not in your, in your lane or in your zone or however you want to say that. You want to value yourself at at least the same level as the people around you. You want to realize that see it as it is, but not worse than it is. So probably like if these mistakes happen, what's really going to happen? And then how would I deal with it? And I think by playing with those pieces, you're going to be a little more doable to do that stuff because you have to understand everything has a cost. Right? It's another thing I say to my clients, everything right. has a cost. So you could delegate those things and that could mess up and that has a cost. Right? Right. But at the same time, you not delegating has a cost. And that cost is you not having your time and your life and your emotions and everything looking how you want it to. So we're always, always paying a cost for whatever we do, whatever we don't do. And we have to measure those costs against each other. And usually for people like you or people with a really big heart, what happens is, is they're paying a really big cost for not delegating out or not um, saying no. And, and it's, and it's it. too big a cost. It's too big a cost. It's not worth it. You know, so I think those are some things that will really, really help. I think that's the issue. I think the issue is I don't know how to say no. Here's the, um, way. Here's the way to understand that your your needs are just as important as those other needs, mm -hmm. not more so, and that you're valuable and that you're worth it, and that you not saying no has a cost. It is right. not without a cost. It's not just like nothing happens when you don't say no to stuff and it freaking drags you down. That shit has a cost. So yeah. the more you realize like, oh, this is affecting me negatively. Right. And you realize like I'm valuable and I don't want to be affected negatively in this way. And I'm valuable enough that I'm allowed to say no to things that are dragging me down because that's not cool. Like you want to be fair to the other person or company or employees or boss or whatever or clients, but you also want to be fair to yourself. And when you're not fair to yourself, everything suffers. So understanding you're valuable understanding and valuing yourself at at least the value of the people around you and being able to hold that hold that in that place and, and understand oh I'm paying a cost right now this isn't cool this isn't cool this isn't fair they're valuable but I'm also valuable yes it matters that I serve them but I also need to serve myself I matter too and not right. letting yourself get too far to that point if you get to that point bring your back up bring yourself back up to your and start saying no to these things that are dragging you down there that are mm -hmm. not fair to you. It's got to be, we have to value ourselves at at least that level because other people are not going to do that. Another great line, I know you've probably got about 60 seconds left, but is okay. that we teach people how to treat us, right? And so if people are treating us shitty or like uh -huh. stomping on us or giving us all this work or whatever, if we're taking it and we're saying yes and we're cool with it, they're going to keep doing that because we just taught them the same way like a dog or a child or whatever, we just taught them you doing this is okay and you can continue to do it. And this is how I'm going to respond when you do that. But 
when we kind of are a little more firm and value ourselves more and are like, this is how this is going to go. And you know what? Here's another final big thing. And I know you got to go, but Mm -hmm. being willing to walk away when we're not willing to walk out of something, we have no power. So if people know you're not willing to walk out of something, they can push you. Right. Yeah. But if you're willing to walk, all of a sudden you have power. So these are just a lot, a lot of things for you to start thinking about is that if you're willing to walk, you have power, valuing yourself. You're just as valuable as anything else is. There's a real cost to your business and personal life when you're mm-hmm. saying yes to everything. What do you say no to just as important as what you say yes to. So think about the things that you're saying yes to that you wish you weren't. And think about like, well, why am I doing that? And then, then think about, well, what is the cost to me doing that? And then think about like, am I really okay with that cost? And then think about, well, I'm teaching people how to treat me. So if, if they're consistently doing this, especially if lots of people are doing this to me, there must be something that I'm doing that's making them think that that's okay. And so I'm going to need to retrain them to treat me this way up here. Yes. But they're not going to value us at a higher level than we value ourselves. If we're valuing ourselves here, they're going to treat us here. If we right. start explaining to people that I'm up here and anything less than that is not going to be okay, then they either have to value us there or they're going to have to drop away or we're going to have to go. But having the strength to do that and understand, you might be like, well, Justin, that's risky. What if there's a backlash? Be like, well, there's a backlash right now, which right. is that you're paying a price. I'm paying the price. Yeah, that's you're right. paying the price. We pay a price for everything. To do something, to not do something, there's cost uh-huh. for everything. And- those are, those are important things to think about. And when you realize that you're paying a lot more of a cost than you realized, uh-huh. um, you got to let that discomfort sit with you. Human beings were very motivated by dissatisfaction. So let that dissatisfaction sit with you of like, you know what? I'm not so sure I am okay with this stuff. And you let that dissatisfaction rise and it hits a point where you're like, no, I'm going to do things this way now. I'm going to raise how I value myself to here now because this is not cool. So I know that's a lot. Like I told you, this time is going to go extremely fast. Yeah. Um, but, but those are a bunch of thoughts that I have that can help you with some of those things. Well, thank you. Super <laughs> helpful. Super helpful. I have to learn the word no. Yeah. That's yeah. the task. It's a very Maybe. valuable word. I turn clients away. They do something <laughs> I don't like, I turn them away. I have people that if they came back to me, I wouldn't accept them. I like it. <laughs> so, David, what's what's on your mind of anywhere anywhere that maybe you're getting stuck, business, personal, uh, frustrations, any any thoughts, anything that I can hopefully help a little bit with? Well, there was a very interesting previous previous conversation and it was making me think of, you know, all the different um, buckets that, you know, thing thing things fall in. I mean, I started my day engaged in a, in, a, in a program, I'm putting this in the, the bucket of, of self-development. Um, you know, at some point during the day, I, I'll be spending some time exercising, yeah. be time with family. There's, um, you know, support of my staff, working with clients, client development, um, mm-hmm. developing new pro. So, there, so there's, there's a lot of different things that are, um, you know, certainly um, time management, but I, I, I like to, you know, kind of dig, you know, a, a little deeper than than, than time management, I, I'm, I'm really thinking that, um, you know, it, it's about connection. Um, first of all, le- level of, uh, of connection um, and, and also being present. I, I think that that's, that's, that's a big challenge as we look at all the things that we have to do in, in, in managing and, you know, with, with all of our electronic devices, you know, and out of office to not out, out of office, checking emails, not checking email, you know, doing all these different things, but, but trying to be as present as possible. And I, and I think that's, that's one of my greatest frustrations when, when I work with people in any one of those areas um, is having people not be present. So, you know, th- that, that I think is, is probably one of the biggest wastes of time that, that we could spend less time in any given task if everyone who is part of it was actually present and not not trying to, you know, multitask, I, I think we've 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 become you know a, a generation of, of multitaskers, the people who are trying to do three different things. Half the people in a meeting are checking their phones because they're you know other 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 communications. So um, 
you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, dig a little deeper for, you know, for, for myself and, 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 and tools to, um, you know, help others to be, to be clearly more present when engaged in any of the, the important activities in life. Yeah. So you're saying like, maybe if you're in a meeting with people um, and people are not engaged or paying attention and on their phone, is that kind of what you mean? Yeah. I mean that, that, yeah, that, that, that type of thing. And, you know, as far as, is, um, you know, setting rules and, and, and guidelines and, you know, um, you know, what, what, what is appropriate, what, what, what's too far. And, and quite frankly, I, you know, I haven't seen a lot that really, um, you know, addresses etiquette of, you know, how, you know, how do, how do you, how do you um, man manage all that? And, and, and what is the, um, you know, the, the best way to make, make connection, but, but try to, you know, make sure that myself and everybody else involved is, is truly present in any one of those interactions. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess a, a couple things that come to mind. I mean, of course, it's, it's tough for us to completely control others. So, you know, um, I, I guess I, I think the the best we can do on that front outside of ourselves is sort of like I was saying to you, Mary, like we teach people how to treat us, you know? So I think if we're in a meeting and everybody's on their phone and we're not setting any type of boundary that that's not really how this meeting is going to go, then they maybe think that that's okay, you know? And so they continue to do it. So I, I guess if I was in the situation, um, maybe you could go into the meeting and be like, hey, guys, you know, we have X amount of time together. Um, and these are the things we're looking to accomplish in this time. And um, I would really ask that during this time, we all we all put our phones aside. And um, you could even let them know, like, I, I want to be really respectful of you guys time. I know your time is valuable. I know we all have our phones that are constantly going off. and um, you know, if, if it's an emergency, your family member, obviously that's different, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I guess, I guess that you teach people how to treat you, you know, uh, I, I think, I think you could even maybe make the meetings a little shorter, you know, maybe, or maybe um, for things that don't have to be meetings, not making the meetings. You know, I think sometimes people can get frustrated with feeling like, oh my gosh, like more meetings and what is this even for? Why are you even doing this? this is unnecessary or this is too long. Now I'm not saying that you guys' meetings are that way. They're probably not. I just know that a lot of times when people are going into meetings, they feel that way. So I, I guess just a couple thoughts that would maybe help would be, well, for one, ourselves, right? Us setting the example. For two, um, maybe only, only having the meetings that we really have to have. Um, for three, maybe making the meetings only as long as they need to be. So a lot of times we have the tendency to make meetings an hour, but maybe it only needs to be 30 minutes or 20 minutes. You know, so I think it's not necessarily bad to have shorter touchings of base and then kind of being very intentional with the meeting. I think when people know, like, this is what the meeting's for, we're going to do this productive thing and end it. I think that's helpful. And letting people know, hey, you know, for, for this short period of time we have together, there's a problem we're solving. Please, please put your phones to the side. Um, we're going to move as quickly as possible. I know your time is very valuable and that's really important to me that I respect you guys' time. Um, so let's, let's knock this out as quickly as we can and, and we'll, we'll finish up as quickly as we, we can, you know, um, of course we can't completely control other people of how engaged they are, but those are a couple thoughts that we can maybe influence it at least a little bit more, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, because, you know, I, 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 I value what, what you have to say and, you know, I kind of put it in the, in the, the bucket of, of, um, professional self-development it's you know help, help helping um helping progress but I, I think a lot of times the things that get put into the the last bucket um that that, that we that we do and, and maybe the most important three but but we tend to put our our professional development we tend to put our exercise and we tend to put our family time so the, the, those yeah. those are unfortunately the things that that um that seem to come last um, but yeah. really the things that should be coming first. Um, yes. so, so I have a, I have a great quote for you that I've been thinking a lot about recently. And look, this is, it's easier for me to say these things than for all of us to do these things. Right. So I, I know all this stuff is tough and I'm a work in progress with all these things too, because these are lifelong things we all try to improve on, including me, but a great 
kind of line that I've been thinking of in my head, this would be worth writing down if you, if you have a pen, is that mm -hmm. electives are not elective. Electives are not elective. So what I mean by that, to the point you're just making, is that a lot of times, I don't know if society just kind of teaches us to think this way. I don't know if it's just our Western culture. I, I don't know. Probably there's lots of these things combined. But I think that we think there's work and career, and then there's everything else. And work and career is going to take up however much time it takes, however much time it needs to take. And then whatever little bit we've got left, we've got left. But, you know, from a fulfillment standpoint, that becomes really problematic. You know, electives are not so elective. So what I mean by that is your family is not an elective. It matters. Mm -hmm. Your health is not an elective. It matters. Your passions are not an elective. It matters. And the way that we know this is because when it's not there, we see the price we pay, right? There's a cost to everything. Like I was saying to you, Mary. So, you know, even, even money-wise, like I'm a bit, so I love to dance like you, Mary. That's how I know her from salsa. And um, I dance about right now, like four times a week for about 45 minutes to an hour a day. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, I feel very sure about this. I make more money and sell more because I dance. I'm positive. There's no doubt in my mind. So not only are those other categories important just because they're important in and of themselves, you will get more members in the chamber and sell more sponsorships and do all of that if you attend more to those other categories. Literally, it has a business effect. It really, really does. It's like imagine a Lamborghini trying to go, you know, 250 miles an hour, but like three of the tires are blown out. You know, that's like kind of how we are trying to do things where it's like, we're, we're doing the work thing, but we're not doing any of this other stuff. You know, it's understanding the price you're paying for not attending to these things. You know, something interesting that you just said um, a couple moments ago, is it like, maybe personal development should be the most important, but we kind of make it the least important. Like maybe we get to it, maybe we don't. And that is problematic. And you're right that most of us do that. And I, I think the reason it's so problematic is because we are the common denominator of every area of our life right? So if we're not investing in ourselves, so we're really on point and showing up in the world the way we want to, it's the common denominator, the business part, and we make less money. It's a common denominator, the family part, a relationship with our spouse and our kids, and then those suffer. It's a common denominator of our health and our health stuff, you know? So it's like kind of realizing we are the common denominator of all that. And there's serious cost, both monetary cost and personal life, happiness, fulfillment cost when we start neglecting this stuff. And I, I remember we did the, did the state workshop with you and a couple, couple of the members that day. And so you probably remember some of those things, but you know, eating, sleeping, working out, all, all successful people are doing them. You know, they're, they're what, we, what I like to call high ROI activities. Meaning, you know, let's say the working out, like you said, you're like, man, it's hard, hard sometimes to make, the, make the time to do that. And I agree with you, it is hard. And it's something I think most people struggle with. But I think it's understanding that you know, working out is not an elective. You know, we cannot show up with our state, you know, the way we're showing up in the world at a 10 without that. It's absolutely mandatory. And if we don't show up at a 10, we can't build the life we want, business or personal. You know, so we have to have work. The way that I look at something like working out or my state or whatever is that if I don't do this, I'm guaranteed to fail. Mm -hmm. Like that's how high the cost is. You are guaranteed to not get what you want without that. So anything that's a high ROI activity, meaning it's in our 10%, giving us our 90% return, meaning the return is so gigantic, we have to do that. We have to build other things around that. So eating, sleeping, working out, got to do them, non-negotiable. Now, I know, like you said, there's only, only so much time in a day. So we want to kind of try to live in our 10% of each of those things. But each of those things, relationship with spouse, with your kids, your health, spirituality, all these things, um, we start to realize how not elective they are when we neglect them and then we see ourselves paying a price for them. So I can definitely promise you they all matter. And even if all we cared about was money and business, they still matter. We make mm -hmm. less money without those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it is. And it, it add me add, um, made me add a, an extra bucket that I didn't even put down there is the, you know, sleep and nutrition. Like that's, you yeah. know, that, 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 that's something and, and, you know, um, you know, certainly that has to be a, a priority because if you're not, not well rested, don't have good nutrition, you know, you, you don't have it. So I, I, I like your, 
I like your Lamborghini um, right. um, analogy. I, I think I, I see it probably more as, you know, these things are the fuel that goes in it. If you don't, you know, it's not, it's not going to work if you don't, if you don't have these different things, this is really what's kind of, kind of fueling everything else. So um, all these work things, um, but it is interesting, like, you know, work-wise, we're doing really well. We've gotten new members. There's a lot of great stuff going on, and I love it. But, um, but you know, have ten, tending to, to everything is, uh, is really important. So that's, um, you know, times like this is just a good time for me to step back and, and, and kind of look at everything. Because if you're day-to-day -day when you're in the middle of it, it's, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily um, think out loud, you know, am I spending enough time with my family? Am I getting enough sleep and nutrition? Am I getting enough exercise? Yeah. Am I doing enough? Profi Those are the things, you, you know, I, I don't ask on, 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 a, on a daily basis. So I think it's really, really important to, to, to step back. And, and I think what you said, um, you know, about how others value you. I mean, you know, with an organization like this, um, you know, it, it's kind of unique that the, 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 the people, um, you know, who run an organization like myself, we have a board of directors and, and those are all people who are running their own business. They don't, you know, so I, I, um, I, I report to some people who think about the organization part-time. So, you know, and, and, and to what extent are those people valuing me and, and, and what I'm doing and, and, um, and, and all of that. So um, I can yeah, give you so. a quick thought on that. I can honestly tell you, I would, even if, even if I, would be or like in a bad situation financially, I will still turn clients away if they're not, if it's not a fit. Like, I, I think, I think as human beings, one of the worst feelings is settling. And one of the best feelings is not settling, right? That, that feeling of just like taking, taking what, um, what we can get, you know, even though we really don't want that thing. So just to give you an example of like the board, right or or certain sponsors or or new chamber members or whatever right um whatever it is we're we're always sort of like accumulating these resources right these human capital or human resources um but what i've sort of learned probably the hard way that's how most of us tend to learn is the hard way is if i'm interacting with other human beings let's say clients right we're talking about business it's a great example if I feel like my clients are not respecting me, they're not respecting my time. If I experience no call, no shows, if they're constantly rescheduling, um, you know, if they're constantly late, um, you know, if I just feel like I'm not being respected, I'm literally not interested. And I'm, I'm not interested in taking on someone like that. Like I've had times where people are no call, no show to a first appointment. They're so devastated and they want to work with me. I'm like, no, absolutely not. I'm not interested. That's not how I do things. I've had people show up 20 minutes late to an initial appointment where we're figuring out if we're going to work together. I'm like, absolutely not. That's not how I do things. You know, um, if you were, if you were applying to Google or Amazon for some executive position and you no call, no show the appointment and I, I, the point is going to come back to what you're saying, I promise. So if you did something like that, where you were no call, no show or showed up 20 minutes late, they're not going to give you another chance. So what I mean by all this is that you know, in my situation, I'm going to tie this back to you as well. Um, it is an honor for me to get to work with somebody. It's a very special privilege that I get to work with somebody that they give me. But it's also an honor for them to get the opportunity to work with me. So I need to feel respected. They're valuable, but I'm also valuable, you know. And so I think a lot of times we don't look at it that way. We look at it like, oh, I'll just take whatever members I could get, or I'll take whatever sponsors I could get, or I'll take whatever board I could get. But I think we don't realize that when there's people in those places that were like big time settling, and we really don't even want in those places, it is very like emotionally exhausting, you know? So um, understanding that the other person's valuable, but you're valuable too. And I, my Instagram post yesterday, I was trying to answer the question, is something better than nothing? right? We say this a lot. Oh, at least I've got some members, or at least I've got some advertisers or sponsors, or at least I've got some people on my board. We say this a lot. At least I've got something. And I think what we mean when we say that is that we really don't have what we want, but we'll settle for this thing that we don't want because we don't really know that we could get what we actually want. And, but that's a very uncomfortable feeling when we do that. And I think there's a cost to that. I think for me, if I've got a bunch of clients that are disrespecting me, 
that's not without a cost. You know, that makes me miserable. And so understanding that whenever you have people that you're not feeling respected, um, sometimes it's us, maybe it's an insecurity we have, right? Me too. We all got to work on our, ourselves too. But if you feel like there's certain people in certain places that you don't even want them in those places because you don't feel like you're being respected as a person the way that you feel like you should be, you know, considering that, that you teach people how to treat you and that maybe it's better to um, not have that position filled for the moment than to have it filled by people who you don't feel that mutual respect, you know? So I can tell you for me, even though it's scary to turn away people, it's scary to turn away money, right? Especially when you really need money. It can be scary to do those things. But when you value yourself a lot um, and you're willing to turn away people that are not not playing by the rules the way you'd like them to, it's a really good feeling turning them away. I believe it'd be better for me to go work at McDonald's and build up a good client base that I want than to be having people disrespecting me. It's like one of the worst feelings in the world. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that helps, but really kind of valuing ourselves and setting the standard of like, I need things to be up here on this frequency at this level of operation. And if things are down here, you're not okay with that. And in mm -hmm. the same way, like I said, with you'll marry, kind of be willing to walk, you know, whenever we're not willing to walk from a situation, we're kind of stuck. We don't really have any power and people kind of mm -hmm. know we don't have power. If we're not willing to walk away, they know it. But if we're willing to like X something out or say, no, this no longer works for me or whatever, all of a sudden we've got some more say over how a situation goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like what you said, you know, what goes along with that, what you said earlier, the, you know, teaching people how to treat you, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's really true. I mean, it's, it's true in our, our work lives and, and our personal lives. I mean, you know, there's, there's people, we, we clean the house more <laughs> for their coming over than other. I mean, there, there, there's certain yeah. people that, that didn't need to be treated a certain way. So I, I, I think that that's, uh, that's um that's very very valuable information and, and a good tip as well yeah definitely definitely and awesome. it's that was that was one of the big impactful things is it, it was from that line is from keller williams uh the real estate company and they have this program called bold and um it's a pretty famous program that they have and they have all these bold laws these laws about life and clients and real estate and business mm -hmm. and the way things work and that's one of their bold laws is you teach people how to treat you and I remember the first time I heard that, it was like, it was like an aha moment. I was like, whoa, like you can do that. Like you can, you can influence that. Like you can dictate how that goes. Like it was, it was really like an incredible moment for me of like, wow, I never, I never realized you could really do something like that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good. This is uh, some really good stuff. I made a lot of notes here. So it's always. It was good uh, chatting and, um, and getting some good information. So I um, appreciate you sharing. Definitely, definitely. Well, it's great to great to see you as well. And um, thank you for making the time. I know I know you've had a busy day and or will continue to have a busy day. But um, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure getting to getting to catch up with you and and hopefully at least helping with a little bit. So all right. Well, thanks again and uh, stay in touch. All right. Awesome. Sounds good. Take care. Take care. Bye bye.